And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy folks, today I'm taking a look at a small card game called Geared. Build your bike. Okay, I don't normally build my bikes, I just go get them at Walmart. Uh, or a better bike store, I guess, if I want a better quality one. Um, this is a game for two to four players, very fast card laying game. Let's take a look at it. The game is played with a deck of cards. Each player is going to be dealt five of these cards at the beginning of the game. Now, most of the cards in the deck are cards that you're going to be using to build a bicycle. There are five levels of cards in the game. Level one, two, three, four, and five. There are more of the red ones than there are of the yellows, than there are of the greens, than there are of the blues, and there are of the purples. And for example, there's only nine purples in a deck, but there's 21 red cards in a deck. Now the levels don't matter on anything other than the amount of points that they're worth. And you need to build a bike, it's a lot easier than I thought. You simply need handlebars, a frame, and wheels. Now if I built this bike here, this bike would be worth 180 points. You can see that the handlebars are worth 20, the frames are worth 100, the wheels are worth 60. If I build a bike that's all the same level, for example here, then I would get 100 points. That's better than 60. And you can see that if you manage to build a level five bike, all purple, that's worth 500 points. So on your turn, what you're going to do is simply take a card from your hand and put it in front of you. You can add it to a bike that you already have or start a new bike. And anytime you want, you can rearrange cards in the bikes that you have. You're allowed to play up to three cards on your turn, but they all have to be the same level when you do so. Instead of playing one of these cards, though, you can also play one of the special cards. There's a steal, where you take a part from someone else's build and add it to one of yours. You can switch one of your cards with somebody else, or you can just remove a card from someone's build and place it in a discard pile. You cannot play these cards if a person, if the bike is complete. Once a bike is complete, it cannot be changed, it cannot be added to, it cannot be stolen from. There's also a few wild cards in the deck, and they will help they count for any points and add to any set. That is it. You're just going to keep playing different cards as the game progresses. And the first person to get to 1,000 points is the winner of the game. One of the things that really struck me about this game was how clean the design was. Anybody who's designing a card game ever should take a look at these cards. They are stunning. I don't know how to explain it. It's just that the from the, 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 the clear symbology to the colors to the, I mean, everything about these. These are, this is some of the best design cards I've ever seen. That being said, the game itself is an incredibly light game. This is a game along the lines of Uno. In fact, I could see this game easily being sold at Walmart. I could see this game being sold at bike stores, you know. This is a game that you can play with grandma, you can just sit around and play because there's not a lot of thought to it. You're just playing cards, trying to get sets, and playing these cards. A couple things I would have changed about the game. I would have made the wild cards worth no points. They're, then their only use would be to build a complete set, because otherwise you're always gonna use them as a purple 50 point card. Um, uh, I also would have gotten rid of these remove cards, the card that trashes apart from someone else's bike. That's not very useful. It's fun to do, like ha 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 to play to take that card, but it doesn't mean that the swap card where you switch two parts or the steal card where you take a part, those two cards are much uh, more superior to the remove card. Um, other than that, fun uh, and in a very light way. I'm sitting there trying to build a set of cards in my hands. Very lucky, not a lot of strategy, just kind of try to get cool cards in your hand, play them down, build bikes. So, so I recommend this game if you know someone who's not a big gamer 
or you yourself are not someone you're looking for something really light and fun. See, I, I, I know some people would expect me to trash this type of game, but I didn't dislike it. It was just kind of a very light activity and, and, and man, the design of the cards that certainly have me enamored, but just it, it's its setting. Would I ever get it? Would I ever play it by myself with my gamer friends? Never. I probably wouldn't even recommend it with my family because I have a bunch of family games I'd rather play with them more. But I certainly can see a place for this game, uh, but that place is probably on the shelves at Walmart. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door.